Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome to my video. It's Sunday and my normal catch up video, but I'm going to unbox some of my yarn I bought on my yarn holiday adventure to Victoria and Melbourne. So, and then I'll show you some of the cows I've caught up on a finished object and I'm just a bit of chat. So, grab a cuppa, sit down, and enjoy my unboxing. First stop was Melbourne. We had an early flight. I did pack two projects, one to crochet on the plane and one to knit. I did no crochet on the way down. The 6am flight, I slept to Melbourne. It's a three hour flight and I had a good nap. Um, we picked up a hire car, we went to a hotel. And I don't know, all the rushing to get ready. I think the first day there, we were just a bit whacked and did a bit of walking around and looking. Now, there are not a lot of photos from um, Melbourne the first three days we stayed there. Thing is very much into you enjoy what you go to see. You can take photos, but he often he feels people often spend way too much time looking through a camera lens, whether it's video or whatever, and not actually enjoying and taking in the moment. So we did. We wandered around and we had some fun. And... The big thing about Melbourne was there was Morrison's Sun Yarn Shop in the CBD and I had checked them out online before. I've never bought from them but I did want to go and see the yarn and buy some. Now the idea of the trip was I would be self-controlled. I had three patterns I wanted to buy yarn for and that was it. <laughs> Famous last words. It was never going to happen. So we walked to Morrison's Sun and I had a look. And the first thing I bought is, and unfortunately, I was going to send this as a gift, but the box has really got beaten up in postage and I'll need my glasses. It's a mini set made in Uruguay. Now, I might as well open the end. There's a, a jade green, a blue, a mustard, a pink, and a hot pink. Um... It's fine, I think it's fine. It's called Fine Yarn, Josephine Fine Yarn. And it is high-end yarn and not um, a little on the expensive side. But that was my first item I picked. My second item was with my pattern in mind. Now, I kept looking and looking and really couldn't see anything that was setting me on fire. I needed a, a main colour, a contrast colour and an accent colour. And I decided I would buy the four ply, Empire 4-ply, 100% um, Australian Superfine Merino. And I wasn't sure that was it. They're 50 gram balls and there's 175 metres in each ball. So the main colour was to be this, which is actually has a number and a name that is Lux. the contrast color was this one same yarn um, and the color is columbine and then the accent color which was the problem was this one and it's irises so the actual pattern was going to be this but i was never convinced i would like this but I did buy it. Now, I think it's about $11.20 a ball Australian. Don't quote me on that. They do have a website. I will put a link to all the websites in the description below. I'm just not sure if they ship internationally. I actually went to this store twice. We had three days in Melbourne and set off on our road trip and then three days in Melbourne before we left. And when the days before we left, we happened to be right near it. And I said, I wouldn't mind going back for a look. Because my first visit, the girl in the shop was efficient, but just efficient. Um, she wasn't interested in anything I was looking for. She was busy chatting to a woman that goes in there all the time. Um, she looked me up and down and I thought maybe it's the way I'm dressed because I had walking shoes on and a big jacket because it was like 13 celsius with a wind chill of the arctic for me and yeah whether she thought i wasn't serious and when i bought the stuff she shoved it all in a plastic bag and um gave it to me 
So my visit to Morrison's son, my first one, was a bit of a letdown. I was so excited and, you know, I'm thinking, well. But my final visit when I went, and I went to buy, and I did actually buy more yarn. I bought two more colours in this particular line because it is really squishy soft. It's a five out of five for soft squishiness. Um, I bought this colour which is Di Dianthus, this pinky colour, and then I bought this one, which is Cha Cha Pink. I also bought a sock yarn. Now, I've been seeing these in all my travels, and what surprised me was exactly the same yarn. Label everything, maybe a different colour. The price range on this yarn through Victoria could go from $20 a skein to $40 a skein and I couldn't understand why. They had this one left. Of course it's orange and they, it's the first time I'd seen that colour and they only had one. In this particular store it was $25.95 a skein. It's Peyton's Pantanile Artistry 4 ply 80% merino, 20% nylon, hand dyed by artisans. 375 um, meters in the skein. Now the second girl when I went back was absolutely lovely and she was just as busy as the first girl. She was really helpful. She signed me up for their mailing list and she put it in a paper bag and was very sweet. So that sort of made me feel a bit better about Morrison's son because I'm I'm the sort of person that is reluctant to go back if the staff aren't a little friendly. They can be efficient, but not, you know, and a little friendly, but they don't have to be overboard or anything like that. They just have to make me feel welcome. And the first girl didn't, but the second girl certainly did. So that's Morrison's son, CBD in Melbourne. Um, it's upstairs. It's a beautiful shop. They have so much yarn books, fabric. They didn't have the knitting needles I was looking for. Um, they did have the brand but not the size I was looking for. So after three days in Melbourne, it was the start of our road trip and the first stop was going to be Bendigo because high on my yarn bucket list was the Bendigo Woolen Mills. I bought a lot of yarn during lockdown and COVID from them and I was so excited about going to the shop and seeing the woolen mills. We went there, <laughs> let down again. For some reason in my head, I thought there'd be like a viewing room where we could see the mill in operation and then we could go in the shop and buy yarn. No, the mill is in a totally different building and you're not allowed to go in there. But there is lots of yarn in and other things in the shop. Now what's in the shop at the time is what's currently finished being milled and ready for sale. And yes, I did buy yarn because <laughs> I do think when you go woolen mills, their yarn is good value for money and they have beautiful yarns. So this is where I bought yarn for one of my particular patterns. Now I bought um, a four ply because I am getting into the lighter weight yarns for the tropics. And this is luxury coastal blue. It is the luxury four ply. 100% wool. They are 200 gram balls and there is 720 meters in each ball. Now I bought four in coastal blue and three, the contrast color, in aquamarine. So that will be, I'll just put those down there because they're all the same, the color of my project. It probably won't get started until next year but I really wanted to hand pick the yarn myself and it is beautiful and soft. I also didn't realize they had their own brand of knitting needles. I bought some. Um, they're wood with cables. I bought really long ones, 100 centimeter because I don't have them. Um, 450 mil, 350 mil and a 3.75 which I have tried. Now look, they are not as bad as the birch ones for the cable twisting. They're not too bad, but um, I guess you get what you pay for. They are cheap at $4, but they do do the job and they're not that bad. 
I did buy other yarn while I was there, but um, it's for gifts. So I'm not, and whoever I'm gifting it to watches the channel, and I don't want them to risk them seeing it and spoiling the surprise when I post it. Now, talking about customer service. So this is one of the places that still requires you to wear a mask in the shop, which is fine. I do know that they had to close down twice because their staff got COVID and they're not prepared to risk it. So you mask up and you have hand sanitizer and all that still. The lady there is probably around my age and it was sort of made me think of me before I went on holidays. It was like Groundhog Day for her. She was efficient. She knew her product knowledge was great, but she wasn't overly friendly. And when I was looking, I heard a lady ask about the knitted items and she told her, oh, we get professional knitters to do them. And the lady said, I'm a professional knitter. And she said to her, bully for you and walked off. And I thought that was a bit rude and uncalled for. However, when I was buying the yarn, she did tell me that, it, like always, anything over $200, she would mail back for me. I didn't have, it would be free. And yeah, so I was happy to jump on that because I was thinking this is going to cost me a fortune in excess luggage. And they mailed it back for free. Now, they're always very efficient with their mailing. It's all, it comes, it's packed, it's fine. Um, there's no hazard notes. It's just very efficient and very timely. I know it arrived in less than five days. Reeves picked it up from the post office and left it on the dining room table for me. Um, I don't know. I just sort of think maybe because I was so excited about being there and she wasn't. But it was still great to say that I have visited the Bendigo Woolen Mills. I do know what the shop looks like. And it was still fun. Now, in Bendigo is Bendigo pottery. And before I had children, I used to buy Bendigo pottery. But back then, I used to buy a lot of dark browns and blacks. I think I've given it to my sister now because it's not my taste anymore and it's her taste, my older sister. Anyway, re a thing was like, let's go to Bendigo pottery. And I was like, oh, okay. And he goes... According to the um, information, there's a lot more than just pottery there. So we went. Unfortunately, we were there on a day when a lot of the other businesses, like the art galleries, were closed. But there were a few open. And the pottery is amazing. They really diversified into lighter colours, brighter colours. There's some old kilns for you to look at. And in my um, secondhand September video, I talked about that. Out the back was this, this magnificent big hall of antiques and collectibles that we spent absolutely hours looking at and I did buy vintage Angora, a uh, mohair yarn there. It was a lot of fun and I really did enjoy going to Bendigo Pottery and the ladies there were absolutely lovely and funny and there's a coffee shop, we had coffee, it sort of lifted the day after Bendigo Woolen Mills. There was something I insisted we buy for Thing. Now, all the years we've been married, when I ask him to do something and it hasn't been done, I go, you know, that such and such hasn't been done. He goes, oh, yeah, when I get around to it. And one of the sayings we know from him as a family is, when I get around to it. The other one is when he falls asleep on the couch in front of the TV and wakes up. I'll say to him, you were asleep. And he goes, no, I was resting my eyes. They're the two famous sayings by thing when I get around to it and when I'm, I'm just resting my eyes. So when we were at Bendigo Pottery, now I don't think I've ever shown you, I have a small wall of plates that I've collected on my travels over the years. And lo and behold, at Bendigo Pottery, there is a round to it plate. I insisted we get this. It was nearly Father's Day and um, this is going to go up on the wall with the other plates. It says on the plate, at long last, we have sufficient quantity for each of you to have his own guard at well. These tuits have been hard to come by, especially the round ones. A round tuit. This is an indispensable item. It will help you become much more efficient worker for years. We have heard people say, I'll do this when I get around to it. 
Now that you have a round to it of your own, your very own, many things have needed to be accomplished will get done. So yes, that was one of the early Father's Day presents I got him because Father's Day was going to happen while we were away. But it is one of the things for over 40 years he has said to me when I get around to it. So yes, I really like that and I, and I think he was a bit chuffed we got it because he does laugh. He goes, yeah, I say it all the time. So that was Bendigo. From Bendigo we went to Wangaratta and I'll do another video on our trip to Wangaratta and Wangaratta Woolen Mills and meeting up with Janice, a subscriber that we have talked online and swapped yarn for for a number of years. Um, I have to do another video because I'd be here for hours showing you what she gave me let alone what I bought at Wanger out of Woolen Mills and what we got up to. Finished objects and cows. Well, for cows, I am way behind. And one of the ones I really wanted to catch up on is Luck of the Draw 6 with Nan's Next Knots. I love Luck of the Draw. I love waiting for the number each week. I don't know why. I just get really excited about it. I often pick eight colours that don't even go together and do a, a lap gan and it always turns out fine. I'm getting hiccups, I can feel it. So before I went, I had done the first three weeks, which is to about there. And I think I'd mentioned that this was the Creative Grandma tutorial holiday blanket something. Look, the tutorials will be listed in the description below along with the websites of the yarn shops that I visited. So since being back, which is about five days, I have caught up. Ta -da! Even this week, the green for this week. And that's what it's looking like. Now I'm using, I'm using burgundy as my base colour and one row and at first I thought, oh, when I decided it, but now I'm quite liking it. I hope that's not looking black, but I really am enjoying this. I love Nan's Next Knots, and she isn't well. It's currently being hosted by Mama Swift, Trish, because Nan is trying to get better. So we send her positive healing vibes and lots of hugs. Um, the other thing was, when I was away... Um, early September creative no charm Grammy Lynette showed her calendar cowl that I had been doing and this month it's fingerless gloves and boot cups and I thought oh that's awesome it was so cold in Victoria and I stopped at a spotlight store and bought one skein no two skeins because it took nearly two two skeins of um, half and half spotlight yarn which is 50% acrylic 50% wool in this blue jeans color and I made because I don't have the calendar to follow the pattern and she lets us make another um, like fingerless gloves as long as it they suit the picture and it's similar so I made these fingerless gloves and I'll put a photo at the end of the video of me modeling the gloves and boot cuffs and they were so handy um, this is a bag of day pattern. It's an old pattern. I think it's a tutorial, sorry. And there is a pattern, I think. I know I've done them before. I made them for a friend and I thought, oh, they're awesome. And yes, this is what I made. They have like a little frilly edge there. Um, it's 155 tutorial. It'll be in the description below for sure because I really like these. And I made these. And because I needed sort of like matching boot cuffs, I experimented. It took a while to get the first one right. And especially as the um, new yarn critic and knitting and crochet critic thing kept saying, no, that's not right. I made these boot cuffs to match. I did her edge around the ankle and her ribbing. Yeah. It kept, first one was, no, it's too short. And the second one was too big. No, the edge doesn't look right. And I'm like, since when did he become the expert? <laughs> but he was right. I eventually was happy with what I had. And yes, I wore them and used them <laughs> quite a bit.
but I do love this fingerless glove tutorial. It's crocheted. It's look, I whip the gloves up one night and the next night I nipped up the boot cuffs. The gloves came first because my hands were always cold. The boot cuffs because we all tend to wear those short socks. I don't know, maybe it's me in the tropics and my jeans. And every so often I'd feel the cold around my ankle because of the gap. So the boot cuffs were awesome. What a find to get the nice 50-50 wool and thank you to Charm Grammy for having something really useful for me to make and I made those when I was away. Now I have bought yarn that I need to find room for and I know Reeve said what you're moving to a new house because you've got no room for more yarn <laughs> and it kept arriving he said. Um, so I decided I would start when I got back having little cleanups and I found a button that I really like that I know I paid a bit of money for and I know I have carrying cakes and big balls of yarn and I thought maybe if I use those up I'll start to use those up I'll have some room they'll empty out the drawers because they take up a lot of room and I'll be able to put some of the other yarn away now I found the button and I knew I had a carrying cake from Janice that she sent me before that would match the button and I whipped up last night this little poncho. This is the Bag o Day Queen's poncho. I have made quite a few of these. They're very popular for young and toddlers because there's no drawstring. They just slip over. And parents love that. They don't want something the kids are just going to get tangled up in. And it looks great. The button was perfect. I've made this one in purple with a bling button. I've made it in other colours and I no doubt will make it again. But this is the Bag of Day Queen's Poncho. I love it. It is listed in my favourite tutorials playlist. Yes, if I have a favourite that I really want to share with you, it goes in the playlist. Especially if I make it more than once. I didn't colour control this till the yellow down the bottom. I needed enough yellow to tidy up the neck and do single crochet so I stopped when I thought I had enough and finished it and to be honest one Karen cake I have like five grams left of yarn absolutely nothing it is the perfect tutorial for a little girl or little boys poncho for that matter so that's what I've been doing today Sunday I decided I needed to spring clean to make room for yarn and I have believe it or not three black garbage bags full of clothes to go to charity shop for second excuse me hiccups second hand September and they are all my clothes I decided if I hadn't worn them in the last two years it was going and yes I got up at 6.30 this morning and a thing was having trouble sleeping so he was reading in the lounge and I went for it. I now have a complete empty shelf. I also sorted through some of my yarn, some to give to charity, some of the acrylic that I've had for years that I've got no idea why I bought and what I'm going to use it for and I just I've managed to make quite a bit of room, not only in my wardrobe, but some room in my yarn stash. I'll stop ready to put more yarn in there that I have now bought. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed seeing my first unboxing of the yarn from Morrison Sun and Bendigo Woolen Mills. Don't forget, you can check out their websites. Make sure you check out the tutorials. You will not regret making the Queen's Poncho. It is awesome. And yes, that's it for this week. I might be back during the week with another unboxing of all the Wangaratta yarn I have. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and have a yarny adventure like me. Bye for now.